Shalom from Jerusalem. We now start the Kutim Maharan, Kitzer and Kutim Maharan, compiled by Rav Nassim, Rabbi's top disciple. We start with the second lesson. Just wait a moment for people to join the live stream here on Facebook. We have our first person. So, let us begin. Emor el Hakwanim. Speak to the priest. Iker hakle zayin shayish ha israeli hu tzvila hafam el chamois ha tzarich adam lichboish. Hain el chamois itara hain shore el chamois im ha moinim vacholokim. The primary weapon of a Jew is prayer. All the wars that a person must wage, whether wars against the evil inclination or other wars with those who wish to impede him or set themselves against him, are all fought with prayer. Therefore, a person who aspires to attain True holiness must engage frequently in, in, and intensely in prayer. Certainly, harbois, uspilois, vakashosois, vesichois, veino, vein, kuno, ize ikra, kle, zayin, the netzach, hamilchama. In supplication, in conversation with his maker, for this is the main weapon for winning the war. So, Menachem is focusing us. He says, if you want to win, like we learned in the first Likut if you want to beat the Yitzhahara, and now he's adding, if you want to go and overcome your adversaries in your life, all this is done, the main weapon that a person has to overcome everything is prayer. We learned last lesson that your prayer has chain and grace that it can go and become this weapon through the study of Torah done with enthusiasm. But here, we're focusing on the fact that the main weapon itself, you know, if you want to bear arms, bear arms with, with prayer, with uh, Tehillim, with a prayer book. And we're saying that, that Kedusha, holiness, is attained through conversation with Hashem. If you want to become holy. And how do we do this? Rinachman teaches in other lessons. We do as Bodhus. We talk to Hashem in our own words every day. We can set time, go out into the fields, take a walk, or go sit in the corner and speak to Hashem in your own words. This is how you can reach holiness. Misha Shoy Meresabris Zoichelisvila. A person who guards his sexual purity is therefore able to pray. Conversely, a person who blemishes this is deprived of the ability to pray. So, if you want the ability for this weapon to, to work, you need to have purity. You have to have and holiness. And the, just take some ex excerpts from my book in Kabbalah. It's soon in print. So who is a tzaddik, the Zohar says? It is he who guards the bris. We learn this from Yosef. Joseph, who by reason of his guarding the bris, he was called Yosef at Tzadik. So a person wants to be a Tzadik, you, know, you have a Talmud Chacham. A Talmud Chacham is someone who has great wisdom in Torah. But you can have a Talmud Chacham who isn't a Tzadik. He's great in wisdom, but he's not great in purity. And then you can have someone who is a Tzadik, he's great in purity, 
But he's not a Talmud Chacham. He's not great necessarily in wisdom. But the purity is of utmost importance. To have both. To be a Tzadik and a Talmud Chacham. To attain purity is to gain a weapon with your mouth of prayer. You know that the mouth and the bris are connected. They, if, if one is Pagam, he makes mistakes in one area, then, his, then he, he makes mistakes in the lips. His mouth is, is speaking usually frivolous words. He's not uh, uh, speaking with Chachma, with, chachma, with intelligence. And a person who's not speaking with intelligence, usually they're, they're making mistakes with purity. So we read in the Rambam that he who looks even at the small finger of a woman in order to de derive pleasure from looking is like one who is looking at her being even more unmodest. And even to listen to her voice to, for pleasure is, is a problem. Yogi Rizal says the great importance that if a person is makes a fail in the bris, they immerses in the mikvah that same day. And Rabbi Nachman teaches in other lessons about the tikkun haklali, the general remedy, the person should say, the ten psalms, which are a remedy for, for all the harm done through not having a purity of mind and heart. And he says if you go and you say these psalms, you go to mikvah, you don't have to worry anymore. But it's very, very important, this idea of purity, that it gives the mouth, it gives its feel the power it needs for, your feel it for, for you to be answered. A person sometimes wonders, why am I not being answered? If you were more pure, your prayer would have more strength. A person should give charity before praying. This will cause his prayer to be fluent in his mouth. Giving charity also saves him from extraneous thoughts during prayer. And he will be able to pray properly without veering off to the right or to the left. Instead, he will speak words judiciously. So, Rabbi Nachman is teaching us that if you want your prayer to go and be fluent and to be smooth, you know, the Talmud says that. Um, that you know if your prayer was, uh, I forget which, which time it was but he said that he knew his prayer was accepted by the, 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 how, how um, smoothly it went out from his mouth how graceful his prayers went out if he stumbled or didn't feel right he knew it wasn't going to be accepted so if you want the tefillah the prayers to go forth properly give charity before you pray and this is going to help it to do so it's impossible for a person to attain perfect prayer except by guarding his sexual purity to perfection. Therefore, each person must bind his prayers to the two tzaddik the true sage of the generation, since they know how to send each and every prayer to the proper place. Furthermore, these sadikim, these sages, build the construct of the divine presence of Shechina with these prayers, and thereby hasting hasten the coming of the Mashiach. So if you want to attain perfect prayer, you know, people go to a tzaddik, a sage for a blessing. That sage, he gives a blessing. The power from that blessing comes from him, 
from his ability to be to to be pure. That's what's going to elevate that the the, the broth on the prayer. And so when you go and, and this tzaddik because he has the tikkun abris, he has that purity. The prayers go to, through him and are elevated to because he he's able to arrange the prayer to take them through the right gates. It says that Rabbi Nachman teaches in another place that a person who prays and he doesn't pray properly, his prayers are like in the room and they're they're stuck in the room and they need to still be elevated. The tzaddik is able to then take these people who pray, who, who pray he sees these stuck prayers and he's then able to grab them and lift them up and, and channel them to the right place. Obviously we don't pray to the tzaddik, but we're saying that he has the ability to take these prayers and you should bind yourself, you should connect to the tzaddik. You know, it's not a new thing from Hasidus of binding to a, a Rebbe. You know, it's brought in, in Sifre Kabbalah before Hasidus even came about. Ways of, of, of how you bind yourself to the, the great sages of the past. The Rizal used to lay on top of the grave of B'nai Ben Yada and to, 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 to bind themselves to the Holy Tzaddik, to the Sage. In my book, we teach a little bit, I believe, about this. Okay. So everyone really in their life, they need this, try to find this perfect Tzaddik, this per perfect Sage that can have them in mind in his prayers and to help to elevate you know, some of your prayers that might be, be stuck. Torus filahayim mechazikin zeze umi'irin zeloze Akein tzarichin la'asar vishneyem daika v'chad Torus ha'adam lo'imeid lishma v'la'asoyis Torah study and prayer strengthen and illuminate each other, so it's necessary to engage in both of them. Right, this is from Torah Aleph, we learned this idea. For all the Torah that a person learns with the intention of guarding and carrying it out, all the letters of the Torah are sparks of souls that become clothed in his prayers and are rejuvenated there like the fetus of a womb. And as a result of this rejuvenation, the light of the person's prayer is also that much fuller. The principal way to perfect prayer, however, is by binding it and bringing it to the tzaddik, the sage of the generation. Wow, so this is unbelievable Torah. So we're saying, we're saying here that if the Torah person learns, but it said very specifically, the Torah that you learn, that, you, that your intention is to carry it out. Allah says to do. You study Torah, the reason of studying Torah is to, to know how to do the mitzvahs. To know how to come close to Hashem. So those Torahs are with the intention of carrying out the mitzvahs. So these become clothed in the letters themselves. The letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And they become clothed in his prayers. And they're rejuvenated through the person's prayers. That's why Rabbi Nachman is saying that Torah study and prayer go together. They work with each other. So all this learning we do now, Kamtai from Mincha, they're attaching to the letters and they're waiting for now the, the prayer side to, to come about with, with, with proper Kavana. And then it, all this Torah, all the, the words of the Torah are going to be elevated. 
And still, he, he's reminding us, Rabbi Nachman, that the key to, to prayer still in our generation is to, to bind yourself to that side, to, to send, that the prayer should go through the tzaddik, to connect to the sages. You know, how do you come close to Hashem? How do you come close, say, to a mortal king? You go to a castle. No, the guards are not going to let you in. And even if they let you in, say, you, you go with the tour guide. You know, you go through the outside courtyard. But if you know one of the, the king's main people, you know, when, when his inner circle, he takes you to this courtyard, to that courtyard, he has the keys. And you get close to the king. So, same thing here. The tzaddik of the generation, he has the keys, he, he goes into the inner courtyard. He knows how to go and elevate each, each person's prayer, goes through different gates. He knows how to take the prayer and put it through where it needs to go prayer. He, he, perfects, he knows how to perfect your prayer and give it the rest that it needs. To, 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 to say to Hashem, look, uh, Shmuel went and prayed and it was slightly imperfect, but, he, but look at that, that Nakuda Tobi, look at that good in him. And look at that and then it, the prayer can slide through the right gate. So it's reminding us, and, you know, it's one of the Rebbe Nachman's main teachings. He's constantly saying, connect yourself to the tzaddikim in your life yeah, this holy sages, you know, a person's influenced by who they accompany themselves with, and it's necessary for every person to to have sadikim that they're they're close to, that they know, they can call upon, that know who they are, they they, they would think of that, think about them. If a person engages in much prayer and conversation with Hashem for many years, nevertheless he sees for himself that he is still very far from Hashem. And it seems to him that Hashem, so to speak, is hiding his face from him in Chas he should not make a mistake Hashem, of thinking that Shem does not hear his prayers and conversation with him at all. If years and years go by. You feel like you're not being answered. Don't look at that and think that Hashem isn't listening, because He is listening. Not a single word is lost. Chas v'shalom, God forbid. To the contrary, each and every word is slowly making an impression on high, and is arousing Hashem's compassion every time. It is just that the building of holiness which He needs to enter is not yet finished. And after many days and many years, and if you will not be a fool, and will not become discouraged in any way, if he summons his strength, fortifies himself, and strives in prayer more and more, then through his many prayers, God's compassion will awaken until he turns to him. You know, so many of us, we're praying for something, we're suffering, we don't understand why is Hashem not answering, what have we done? Yeah, we've done a little bit wrong, but we do something so bad, they should just ignore us. This is how we sometimes feel in our prayer, and, and Rabbi Nachman is saying, don't, th don't look at it like that. Every time you're praying, you're building, you're building and building blocks. And you don't know how much prayer Hashem is, is requiring of you. And it's not lost. Everything you're saying, it, it, it is making an impression. Don't give up. Don't give up. If you see your Hizbodudus, your Jewish meditation to Hashem, your prayers, they don't seem to be working, you're, you're turned away. Know that 
that eventually Hashem's compassion is going to be revealed to you and nothing was ever lost. You was going to see it in the end. Nothing was lost. No prayer was ever... No prayer is ever lost. And he, he says, don't give up. Don't give up. He says, Hashem is going to turn and shine his face upon this person. Not that he's just going to give him a little bit of light. He's going to give him tremendous amounts of light. If you don't see your prayers answered right away, Shem desires your prayers more. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing that you have to wait to see his salvation. But you will see his salvation. You'll see it in great ways. It's not proper to think about receiving reward for anything. For all of our good deeds and all of our prayers are given to us by Hashem. Therefore, even if a person occasionally merits some salvation and to draw a little closer, a little bit closer to holiness, should not think that he married this as a result of his own Torah study, prayers, and good deeds. For everything is from Hashem, and were it not for Hashem's great kindness, he would have, he would already have drowned. God forbid. In what would, ha, and, and in what would, in in what he would have drowned in, may Hashem, may Hashem save us. So Rabbi Nachman's trying to tell us, you know what, you had a good, you had a good prayer service, you had a good, you know, good learning of Torah that day. You should feel good about it. And then, but if you see it, suddenly a minor, uh, something happened good, don't necessarily take it as the merit of your prayers. Look, we're here in this world to serve God. We're His servants. And, and you have death. You know, maybe you don't like being a servant of God. Maybe you expect something different in life. But this is this is this is the way the the process was. This is the way the world was created. We're lucky. We 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 we're blessed to be Jewish and to 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 have the ability to serve God and to be a servant. I mean, this is the. Uh, uh, this is the greatest uh, people would love to be where we're at. So many people are converting today. They, they want to be close to God. They want to be like a Jew. So we have the ultimate. But don't think, don't wait around like doing a mitzvah and say, okay, well, Hashem should be giving me something back. You know, don't do the mitzvahs for reward. Don't learn Torah because you, know, you immediately want to, you want to see the results of this. Do it for the sake of, of the king. Do it for the, because this is what you were created for. Do it as a kar satov. You, you, you're living a life that other people would wish to have. That you're Jewish, that you have hands and feet, and you have eyes, you can see, and ears. You can turn your head. There's so many things we have to be grateful for. So be grateful, and, 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 and learn the Torah, and be a servant of Hashem out, out of gracefulness, out of yira, out of ava. But not just because you want to receive a reward. This isn't a, you're not gonna, this is not the way to work on, on, on this. Ikara liyitz ro bisha vua ha ro yid vu Ikara dimasa avu hasvusa kain tsuri chinleida Shika ni sayon shel ko adam bezebo lampu vesa avu zoiz the essence of the evil inclination is the urge for sexual transgression. This is the primary source of the spiritual pollution. Therefore, one must know that the main test for every person in this world is the struggle with this desire. Fortunate is he who merits to win the war. So Rabbi Nachman teaches in the in the Sikh of Iran that when he was a young child the Yetzar came to him and said I'm willing to help you overcome your desire for food for all the pleasures in the world for money everything if you just give me one desire and that of, of lust 
and sexual impurity. You can go and have everything else. And Renachman said, no. I'm going to work on that one itself. And I'm going to eat. I'm not going to worry about the eating. I'm not going to worry about all these other typos of pride and all these things. I'm going to focus on that one. Not that they, the others didn't matter. But my focus is there. Because once a person has purity, then all the others come easily. Constantly teaches that the main thing for a person is sexual purity. This is what's going to draw a person close to, us, to Hashem. Right? We, we learned before, how, why was Yosef given the name Yosef Atzadik? Because he had purity. That is what makes a person a sage. That's what makes a person holy. And this whole feed this whole lesson was about the idea if you want your prayers to to be strong and to be a weapon you need to have that purity and how do you get that purity you go to the mikvah you don't follow after your heart and your eyes you build yourself a fence so you should not see impure things The true tzaddik of the generation is associated with the concept of greater luminary. He shines to and illuminates prayer, which is the concept of a lesser luminary. This ends the Kittush uh, lesson 2. So, with everything, Rabbi Nachman always starts out with the you know with the pasuk. He said Emorel at Hakohanim, and he speaks about prayer being a weapon for a Jew, and immediately goes into the idea that we have to be pure, and this is how we create this weapon. And he speaks about the tzaddik, the the, the holy sage. She is the one who has this weapon of prayer that we need to associate ourselves with with holy people and we have to connect our prayer to, to holy places and when I pray, I try to, to pray in, in a minion where there's a sage I want my prayers to go up with his I simply try to go and pray I, people tell me they go I went, I'll tell you a story I went to a town, I won't say what town in Israel and they asked me to help, you know, if I could fundraise. It was a impressive synagogue. And they asked him, who's the rabbi? Ah, tells me, you know, they had a big fight. You know, some people don't want a rabbi. They want it just to be a cloud. Everyone, you know, you know, can do their own thing. There's no one direction. I said, if you don't have a tzaddik, if you don't have a sage... The synagogue is missing something. You need direction. Okay, I understand. You all want to do your own thing. Okay, you can still do that, but you, you need a rabbi. You need you need you need you need this this person. I, I just gave it to him. I lost it. I said, "How can you sit there and say you're trying to you want to raise a hundred thousand dollars for a synagogue and you you guys don't plan to have a rabbi? I know you're holy people, but come on, this is this is this is the way." So when I pray, I try to go and pray by the Hornet's type of Rebbe many times. Because so I know he, uh, he is a master in prayer. That he can take my prayers and help them to go in the right place. I asked him once when I was a Bachar 15 years ago. I said, How is it that, that the Tzaddik is able to go and take these prayers from people and these confusing thoughts? And elevate it to, to Hashem and, and raise it up. And he looked at me, shaking his head like the pain and the suffering. Nobody knows you know, what the sage he goes through trying to take care of us all. And he, you know, Hashem makes it so, you know, a lot of people are they're scared to go to a sage because they believe the sage can look into their soul and see everything. 
And it's true, the, the, the sage can see everything, but he only sees the good. It's not like us, we see the bad in everyone and everything in our life. The sage sees only the good, he's trained to do this. So when you go to him, you know, even if you have, you're, 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 you're in filthy tuma. I mean, he sees that you're struggling, but he doesn't see the, he doesn't sit there and look at the tuma. He doesn't see the, stare, stare at the bad, he just wants you to come close to Hashem. So it's okay to go see him. It's okay to be in the presence of a sage, even though you're not so holy. That's what he's there for. The Yitzhar is tricking a person. Stay away from the sage. Stay away from the minion. Stay away from the from other holy people because, you know, you're you're too low for it. He says, stay away from the the sadik. Stay away from the sages from your from your Jewish brethren because you're not on par with them. Stay away. That's what the Yitzhar is trying to tell you. But no, it's the opposite. You need to be around them because we elevate each other. We're supposed to see the good. So, like I was saying, I, I told him, I said, what goes on with the sage? And he told me, he was shaking his head. You have no idea the responsibility and the difficulty to have these thoughts flying in the air coming to the sage, which is implying himself and having to deal with it. Like, you, you know, you, people are sitting in, a, in America, I'm sitting here in Jerusalem, you know, I'm, you know what I see every day, you, I, you can't compare what you guys see with what I see, you know, mostly I see religious people, people that want to live in the holy city. Um, when I lived in Sfas, it was, you know, surprising, most people, even though they weren't religious, they still kept Shabbos, because they were spiritual people, they wanted to live in, in a place of spirituality. But I don't know how a person can do it. Most of you viewing are in America. You're in the, in, in you see evil all around you. I, I don't know how you survive from such a thing. And not a, a Zionist to, that you would say to everyone to come to Israel because this is uh, where you're supposed to be. You know, it's gonna fix everything. But at the same time, I also see a person has to bring a fence around themselves. They have to go. And, and protect themselves. And I don't know how a person, how it's humanly possible. For, for me, I, 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 I brag to people. I, I left Yerushalayim maybe two times in a year. I don't want to leave Jerusalem. This is this is a holy city. I, why, what, for me, I, I was making a joke. You know, people, you, you know, I don't know if people like these type of jokes. But I went to I went outside Jerusalem once to, to Beitar. I said, I'm, I feel like I'm going to Chutzlart. <laughs> for me, you know, to be in Jerusalem, to be like this is what you, this is what Rabbi Nachman is saying. He says you gotta surround yourself with the sage of generation. You have to surround yourself with holiness. You have to protect yourself from the evil inclination for sexual transgression. And how do you do that? You make a wall, like like Donald Trump wants to do. What are you gonna do? Okay, you have Mexicans coming over. You know they they're bringing drugs. They're bringing what? Is, what should I quote it? <laughs> Buenos dias. Uh, you know, you have. What are you gonna do? You gotta build a wall. You gotta build a wall. You know, there's no choice. You gotta. The first thing you do is that you build a wall. You build a wall. You let the people come in. You know, the right way. Okay, with this, I. I what can I tell you? I, I agree with the guy on that. So, but the same thing. You know, in our life, in holiness. You know, wherever you are, like in Jerusalem, I try to build myself a wall, and I, you know, I need to build a higher wall. You have to keep, you know, fixing that wall. There's gonna be holes in those walls. You gotta, you know, clog them up. You gotta re-cement them. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta fix it. Wherever you are in life, position yourself like this Torah teaching in the Torah. What, what do we need to position ourselves? We need that our prayer should be a weapon. We need our prayer to be a weapon. How do we do that? We have purity. Okay. How do you have purity? You make a wall. Okay. You make a wall for yourself, and you and you learn how to do how to how to work within that wall, and you go out of the wall. You know, maybe not. Uh, once um, my friend was going with the Nicholswood Rebbe in Brazil. Okay, I heard this firsthand. So the Rebbe told him, and he said, "You know, be careful with your eyes. Don't look around. There's a lot of impurity." And and the Rebbe said, "But don't worry about me, because if I looking, I I don't see anything." So. The story of the Chose of Lublin, he came to the Holy Reshmelko of Nicholsburg. He was 10 years old or something, and his father brought him with 
with um, a piece covering his eyes, so he couldn't see. And the Rebbe explained to him, he said, in my world, you learn to see without looking. So you have different paths to, cut to how to build this fence. But the main thing is that the heart should be pure. And with this purity, you get that weapon of prayer. And that's, that's what we need. We all need that weapon of prayer so that we can go and have our desires fulfilled in ways that we understand. Hashem, and we heard that Hashem is, is listening to all prayers. So he's not rejecting the prayers. He's not rejecting the prayers. He hears them. You're building them up. And one day it's all going to... You're going to see that, 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 that they were heard. And the Torah study is being elevated in the prayers with sparks. We learned. And don't do things just for reward. Because that's what we're created for. We're created to serve God. And be happy about that. Be happy with what you, what you had. We put, put in little chavos of avos type of twist into it, you know, be happy for your hands, your your eyes, your eyelashes that protect your eyes. See the good in your life. And through the tzaddik of the generation that you must seek out and find, your prayers will also be elevated. The kitzer, uh, the kudim aran, it's not so kitzer once I get a hold of it, I guess. And I, and I only prepared for about three minutes. So if I prepared, we'd have more problems. So you let me know your feedback. Um, thank you for coming. Should we do like the old tradition and sing a song? Um, after the of the Chobiyamas, Tahadi Bainu, the of the Chobiyamas, Tahadi Bainu, the of the Chobiyamas, Tahadi Bainu, the of the Chobiyamas, Tahadi Bainu. Thank you for coming. You can leave the questions below. All the best.